Good morning, Rise. How are you guys doing this week? I wonder how you found having a choice of listening to the story from our book this week, from the book of Acts, Diary of a Disciple, or watching the video last week. We're going to do the same thing this week. And this week we are in chapter 19. So you can either choose to watch one of the videos below or maybe find a different one if you want to find another one on YouTube. There are a few, but some of them are a little bit not as good. Or you can carry on listening to our story of the diary of a disciple. I'm afraid I don't have any pictures for you this week, but I hope you still enjoy it. I'm not going to read the whole chapter of this this week because it's a very long chapter. We're reading Acts chapter 19. So I want to read to you a little bit at the beginning of the chapter and a little bit more towards the end of the chapter. And if you want to read the whole chapter, I'm sure you can find it in a Bible at home and read it with somebody if you need some help. So this, if you want to carry on listening, keep listening. If you want to uh, choose one of the videos to watch, you can choose one of the videos now and then come back to the video when you are done and we'll have a little reflection. Okay, so we are in Acts chapter 19 and this chapter is called Tissues and Aprons. Hmm. So Paul decided it was time to go over to Ephesus again. Obviously he would have checked with God first and he went on a long road through the countryside to get there. When he finally arrived, Paul found some Jesus followers and got chatting. He really wanted to know whether or not they were filled with Holy Spirit because they were, if they weren't, he wanted to pray for them. Filled with the Holy Spirit? What's that all about? Well, the Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God and just like God the Father is God. Complicated, I know, but trust me, it's true. You remember we talked about the Holy Spirit way back in chapter two. Paul knew that God the Father wanted everyone to have the Holy Spirit living in them, just like he'd sent the Spirit to fill the Jesus followers at Pentecost. But not all the new Jesus followers knew this. Some of them had chosen to follow Jesus and love God and been baptised and everything, but he hadn't, but hadn't been told about the Holy Spirit. Anyway, it turned out a whole lot of these Jesus followers hadn't even heard about the Holy Spirit. But once they understood what Paul was talking about, they couldn't wait. Paul explained they were still Jesus followers and God still loved them, but that God had even more to give them. Listen, said Paul, when you were baptised, that was great, but it was just a baptism that showed you wanted to change, leave your old ways behind and follow Jesus. Let me pray for you now. So Paul put his hands on their heads, not because he thought their heads were cold, but because it was a good way to pray for them and for God to use Paul as he prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to come and fill them up. The Holy Spirit came and filled them from top to toe and they all spoke in different languages and said all kinds of things that God told them to say. Wow! That was a whole 12 more people who had the Holy Spirit living inside them. Living inside of them, filled with the Spirit, isn't that a bit creepy? No, not at all. The Holy Spirit isn't like some sort of creature that lives in your tummy and wiggles around. He's 100% God and 100% good. I don't really know what he's made of, but I know he makes a big difference. He helps you to listen out for God to make good choices for God and helps you be brave and know that God is with you and so much more. The Holy Spirit is awesome. And that is true and that's what we believe today. Now I'm going to skip a little bit of this in the middle and I'm going to go a bit further into the chapter. Okay. So it says there was one guy called Dem. In the Bible he's, <clears throat> in the Bible, he's called Demetrius. There was one guy called Dem who used to make statues of Greek gods out of silver. Well, of one Greek god in particular called Artemis. 
and in some stories it's called she's called Diana because that's the English version. Before Paul showed up he used to sell loads of them and made himself a nice pile of cash and now he hardly sold anything. He got his silver making mates together and told them that it was all Paul's fault and that they couldn't make their money anymore. This Paul dude, he's the one who ruined this for us. He's the one who's told everyone far and wide that God statues aren't really gods at all. Of course it's not just us that loses out. What about these Greek gods we're trying to keep happy? What about Artemis? People won't love her anymore. I mean, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Dem managed to get everyone mad. Very mad. So mad, in fact, they started shouting about how great all their little silver gods were and running around trying to catch anyone who was known for hanging out with Paul. They found a few of Paul's mates and dragged them into the meeting place. When Paul found out, he wanted to go there himself and sort everything out. But the other Jesus followers told him he really couldn't come over. It was just too dangerous. Loads and loads of people were there in the crowd and they were all shouting at the tops of their voices. It must have been super loud and super scary. They weren't even all shouting the same thing. They were really confused. Some of them didn't even know why they were there. They just followed the crowds. Eventually, they pushed a guy called Alex into the middle of the stage in front of the crowds and told him to explain himself. Alex didn't know what to do. He waved his arms around a lot and tried to get everyone to shut up. Everyone started to quiet down a little bit when suddenly someone shouted, Hey, he's a Jew! And that was the end of Alex's chance because when they realised he wasn't even Greek, they decided he couldn't possibly be allowed to say anything about their Greek gods. So they just shouted constantly for two hours. Ah, Greek gods rock! Great is Artemis! Great is Artemis! Just imagine hearing that for two hours in a row. Finally, one of the city leaders managed to get them all to stop shouting. Calm down, you lot, he said, while waving his arms around like a chicken. Everyone knows Ephesus is the place where we look after the great Artemis. You've dragged these people in here and they haven't done anything wrong at all. Did they go and trash the Greek temple? Did they ruin all your statues? Did they say your Greek gods were evil? No. If you have a real problem with them, or you can actually say what they did wrong, then come to the courthouse and tell everyone, and we'll have a proper trial. Now, if you don't, all chill out and go home, and then we'll all go home, we'll all get arrested for causing chaos for no reason. Is that what you want? After that, everyone went home muttering under their breath about Paul and his mates. They'd have to think of a better way to get their own back. Okay, that's the end of that chapter. So hopefully some of our friends will have joined us back for this little bit. If you've watched the video, hello, welcome back. So a lot happens in this chapter. There's an awful lot that's happened, but I'm only going to ch touch on a couple of little things about it today. And these things are all about the Holy Spirit. So Paul was in the city of, can you remember the place? Ephesus. You might practice saying that because it's tricky. And lots of people in Ephesus didn't worship the one true God. They didn't worship God Almighty that we worship, but they worshipped what we would call false gods. So Paul met some men in Ephesus, hadn't he? And they had been baptised and they knew who Jesus was, but they didn't know all about what Jesus had done for them. He didn't know that Jesus came to tell people about, about who he was, about God. They didn't know that Jesus had died on the cross for their sins and was buried and rose again. So Paul explained that anyone who put their faith in Jesus could be saved from his sins 
and receive eternal life. And that's the same for us today. And when the disciples heard all about this, they received the Holy Spirit and were baptised. Now, some of you might not know what the Holy Spirit is, and I'm going to read what it says in this book again. Some of you might have heard this, but some of you might not. But I like the way it explains it. It says, filled with the Holy Spirit, what's that about? Well, the Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God and just like God the Father is God. It's complicated, but trust me, it's true. So Paul knew that God the Father wanted everyone to have the Holy Spirit living in them, just like he'd sent the Spirit to fill the Jesus followers at Pentecost. But not all the new Jesus followers knew this. Some of them had chosen to follow Jesus and love God and been baptised, but they hadn't been told about the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit helps us to understand God's word and understand God's truth. And God speaks to us today through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit isn't a thing. The Holy Spirit is a person. So we talk about him, the Holy Spirit. We don't talk about it. So once these believers received the Holy Spirit, they went round and told other people all about him as well, which is great. But as this happened, more and more people in Ephesus began to believe in the one true God and stop worshipping false gods. And can you remember the name of that false god that a lot of them were worshipping? She's got two names that we might know. Artemis or Diana. And people would sell statues of her for them to worship in their homes. So the people that were making these um, statues didn't like this because it meant they were making less money because people were following Jesus and they weren't making money from these false statues. A little bit like the story last week when the, uh, per the slave owners of the girl who had the spirit and so evil spirit inside her were angry because they were losing money from it. So what we can learn from this story is that God wants us to live in the light. God wants his people to live in light and he doesn't want us to live in darkness. And God's enemy, Satan, doesn't want people to leave his kingdom of darkness. And so sometimes he does whatever he can to stop people from being saved. He, asked, he used Demetrius or Dem in the story to cause chaos and confusion and didn't succeed in keeping Paul from sharing the good news. But the Holy Spirit gave the people of Ephesus light so they can be rescued from the darkness of sin and come to Jesus, the light of the world. So, I've got a couple of questions that you might want to talk about at home with your family. And I'm going to ask you maybe three questions today. And I would like you to maybe think about them this week. The first question is, how is the Holy Spirit like a light? And how is he like a light in your life and in your family's life? That's number one. Number two is what does the Holy Spirit do in your life? So it's very similar to what I've just asked you, but slightly different question. What does he do in your life? And would you like, do you have the Holy Spirit in your life? Would you like the Holy Spirit in your life? And the final question this week is how can you share God's light to those around you as you are at home helping your mums and dads or maybe you're going into school or doing all the things that you might be doing this week, maybe on Zoom calls with your friends. How can you share God's light to those people? So we're going to say a quick prayer and then I will speak to you again next week. Father God, thank you that you sent Jesus, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and you were, he was buried and came back to life again to show us that we can have true life in you. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit and that he guides us and helps us understand your truth and understand the light. Help us to um, understand the Holy Spirit in our lives this week, Father, and help us to 
be that light to those around us. Be the light to those people that we meet, whether that's at home or at school or anywhere else we may need to go. And I pray that you will be with us all this week and keep us safe as we love you. Amen. Amen. So I hope you're OK. It's been another long call, I'm afraid, but I will speak to you guys again soon. Take care now. Bye.